Welcome Collectors, Kyle the Collector here and today we're going to talk about the rise and fall of SEGA. Where did they go wrong? So SEGA had a lot of code names for different consoles, so you'll see these code names pop up once in a while in this history of console video. So things like Mercury, Venus, Mars, and of course Saturn, and then there was a Neptune and Pluto. So SEGA had a ton of great games. Especially for the Genesis and then they kind of lost focus of that and focused a little too much on consoles so pushing the boundary of what consoles could do all right let's take a look at the beginning so we have Sega Master System generation this is the SG 1000 released in Japan July of 1983 then they kind of did a redo version of this called the SG 1002 and it was released a year later in 1984 that July. Here's the Mark III. It was the Master System and it was released in Japan October of 1985. Here's the SC3000 which is a computer version of the cartridge based SC1000. This uh, Master System was released in September of 1986 in America and then eventually released in 1989 in Brazil where it is still popular to this day. Alright so here are some accessories. Alright, so they tried to do Sega VR, so that didn't really work out. Here's uh, some 3D glasses that was compatible with some games. Of course, they had to have a light phaser as well. Here's the updated version of the Master System, so it's more compact, and then eventually they did call it Master System 3 Compact. Tech Toy has made a lot of these in the past few years, specifically for Brazil, where it is still popular. A lot of these are Sonic. Uh, versions or like a guitar game version of it. Some of them are like a plug-and-play, but they're using that hardware for the Master System. Here is a super compact, so it has everything you need except for the screen. Here's the girl version of it, pink. So you plug this into your TV. The Game Gear is basically the same thing, but it has the TV built into it. So this is a, a white version of that. But Tech Toy will take this hardware and make new portable systems for it. Coleco has done uh, Sonic handheld. All right, so let's go to the most famous generation of Sega, the Genesis. So here's the original. Okay, so this was released in Japan October 29th, 1988. And then they did a revision of it. This is what I'm used to, this is what I had as a child. And then they even did a third revision called just the three. All right, so um, it's super compact, not compatible with every game, but does exist they would put the hardware for the Genesis in all sorts of PCs uh, so then it comes with like a white controller so any of these MSX AX like the 330 so there's a slot you just put it in there so uh, eventually they wanted to get away from cartridges and do a CD so I got this uh, Sega CD as a child when it first came out Okay, and then I also got a 32X when it was on discount and could never find any games for it. So I had the whole uh, 32X CD Genesis console transformer type of Voltron machine. <laughs> okay, so. Ready to form Voltron! And then. They had a Mega CD version of it for the older original Genesis. There's like a CD player that's portable and then JVC made a Sega CD even. There's a boom box that you can play Sega CD through as well. All right, so for the 32X, they did make a standalone system called the Neptune that uh, never was released. Here's Sega Genesis Menacer. So really all you need from this is this component but it has all these scopes and stuff okay at games has made some versions of this i have this one and it's okay uh here's more like plug and play type of things um here's one that has like sonic's head silhouette um here's a mega jet all right so this you could play on a plane and it would hook up to the tv in the uh back of the headrest in front of you so this kind of technology of course became like the nomad which is Kind of like a Game Gear, but it plays Genesis cartridges. So at games, they make their own portable consoles called like Gopher, Gopher 2. So yeah, I've not played any of these, but 
A lot of people don't like that game's quality. Okay, here is Sega Tower of Power. Wow. I think that might be taller than I am. All right, so let's move on to where it all started to decline. We got the Sega Saturn. Here's some prototypes of what it could have looked like. But this is what it ended up looking like. It has that weird uh, controller, that round circle one. Okay, and then so they did a lot of variants of this console for Japan. So if you're into that. Then there's like a Victor version, uh, brand V Saturn. So those are pretty rare. They also have this one in this color scheme. Hitachi also manufactured uh, Saturn, and then they even have like a GPS car system. So man, you hook this thing up, you roll around in Japan, okay, backseat people get to play some Saturn. This is how you roll, all right? This is the way to be. All right, and so here's the Saturn Stunner gun. Uh, there was a Pluto, which was a Sega Saturn that uh, hooked up to the internet, but it was just a uh, code name, you know, never released okay so prototype okay here's a cool sega retro fighters controller all right so let's move on to the dreamcast okay so this was the end of the consoles for sega so i kind of think that that weird dreamcast controller kind of looks like that sega saturn so they just didn't want to give up on that design they thought that was a great design um the memory cards had like a little directional pad and a and b button so you could play some mini games on those so that's kind of cool kind of gimmicky though and then we got the dreamcast gun so that's cool and here is a really weird dreamcast tv console wow okay retro fighters is making a controller that's more up-to-date modern so that would definitely be something to look into if you like retro fighters controllers which i think they are good all right so here's some other sega products pico so this is for kids you read a book it's kind of interactive Picture magic, you can do a little bit of photoshopping on this weird contraption. They made their own camera, a Digio camera. Whatever these are, I don't know, we wannabes. Uh, Retrobit has made some controllers for these Sega systems and they are pretty cool looking, like especially this clear blue one, definitely. But I really do think Sega was always pushing what was possible in gaming. I have many fond memories of playing Sonic games especially Sonic CD as a child. Um, just makes you wonder what could have been if they would have focused more on Sonic and games and not so much on consoles. And in the war between Nintendo and uh, Sega, Nintendo definitely won out, even though Sega gave them a run for their money during the Genesis times. I guess Sega do what Nintendo don't. Ha, ha, ha. Bob, Nintendo, don't make lame jokes, please.